Today, I've got seven rustic DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome. Project number one, rustic wall decor. You can also use this to hang on your door. So this is a potato bag that my husband brought to me that he got when he went to buy seed potatoes for our garden. So he brought this home, thought I might could do something with it, and of course, I kept it. These are some cotton stems. And I also have some thrifted flowers. And this, I think this is like a wooden, really lightweight, uh, big plate or platter. I'm going to spray that W in the middle with some satin paint. Of course, I didn't have to do that. You'll see why shortly. Also, you can use these little picks if you would like instead of using the big ones, and you can see they're very similar. I think you can get some cotton picks also at the Dollar Tree, if you wanna look for those. So just like with any other floral, if you wanna be sure that you fluff it out, bend it back and forth, move it around, nothing grows straight up and bunched together, I don't think, but maybe grapes. Okay, so I'm just trying to see how I wanna place this. I'm going to go inside the edge. It's only stitched on the bottom and on one side. And I'm just going to clip it and pull that thread. And it's going to open the whole thing. I think that dog food bags, most of them have the same type of a, of a seam. You just clip one section and it pulls right out. So I'm trying to decide which piece I want to go along here and trim it up. And I learned a little trick. And this is something that I got from Crafting Cousins. To get a straight line in your burlap, pick a piece and just pull it, and it will make you a nice straight line. Look at that. Now I have a guide to cut all the way down. So thanks for that tip, girls. Just going to go right along there. And you can pretty much use the same process here on this top. I want to make this kind of even. It doesn't really matter in the end, but I felt like I needed to clean it up a bit. Makes it easier to handle. So I'm just getting a straight line there also. And then trimming up where it's a little bit longer on the top. If you don't have a potato bag, you can use an onion bag you can use um, you could probably use a pillowcase if you had one or you can just use a piece of burlap that's not in a bag but I like the the print on this so I wanted to be sure to use it and it's perfect for this time of year when everybody's using patriotic themes on their porches and in their house I think this is a really good um, use for summer decor so this is not metal as I've said it's some type of wood or something. I'm just going to hot glue right to the back and it will stay perfectly fine here. Just going to fold it over and I know you can't see the bottom. I apologize but it's the same process as I'm doing on the sides. Just fold it up and glue it down. Fold it over and glue it down. Now I'm not going all the way up because I'm going to do a little something different with the top. So I'm just going to go up maybe a few inches from the top is where I'll stop. Don't worry about the mess. We'll fix that later. Okay, so this is how much I have on here. And now you can see why it didn't matter that that W was on there. Because you can't see it now at this point anyway. So now I'm going to fold this over and I'm going to press it down. And then get in between the layers also so it will stay flat. Now I've tried to make a point to use quite a bit of glue to hold this down because I will be stuffing it and putting some pressure on it. I don't want it to fall apart and I'm using Gorilla Glue Sticks. But you use whatever you have. If you're putting it outside, just be aware that hot glue will release sometimes in a lot of sunlight and heat. So just keep that in mind. You might want to keep it inside. Now just to keep that folded, I put a little extra glue underneath. Now I'm going to take the other half of the bag and use that for my stuffing. I have old pillow stuffing here. You just rip apart those old pillows that are beat to death. I'm just folding it up in no particular way, making a little pouch and stuffing it on the inside. 
just stuffing my strings down and all the little cotton fluff so that it's on the inside. So see there? It gives it a little bit of fluffiness to appear that it is full of something. We want it to appear that it is full of cotton and florals. These came on a long stem so they very easily go down in here. Oh, I might add, these particular cotton stems came from Amazon. My husband ordered them uh, as well as a hand sander for me, so. Does he know me or what? That was my Mother's Day gift. Okay, so I'm gonna take these little flowers. They look like, almost look like African violets to me, except they're red and white. Do they come in any other color besides violet? Let me know in the comments below, because I'm not sure, but that's what they look like to me. And I'm just gonna put the white in the middle because I only have one of those. They all tuck pretty nicely into the bag that is underneath, so I didn't use any foil foam or anything like that to hold it in. They, they tuck nicely into there, and I got the top folded over and tight enough that it kind of holds it in place. So again, I'm just fluffing out the pieces that I mashed up. Now look what I'm going to do with all of the pieces. Talking about using every bit of your items in a project. Look at this. This is the scraps that I pulled out when I was making my edges. And I'm just going to tie a little knot there in the middle. And then you can cut free all the little loops. See how there's some loops in there? Those can be cut. You can uh, trim those up if you want to, or you could leave them hanging at different lengths. I kind of like the choppy, rustic look of this. And of course, you know me, I've got to fluff it. And put it in a thousand places till I see what looks right to me. So then I decided I had a little bit left from the bottom of the bag because all we use so far right is the front and the back. Now I've got the bottom section here. I'm going to tear some of that off that's got some of that red from the word in it and I'm going to tie a simple bow in it. If I can get it to behave itself. It took a minute there. Okay, there we go. So pull that out and fluff out that bow. And then I think I like it just like that. Look at that little messy bow. Isn't that perfect? And I just used my scraps for that. Then I'm just gonna add that bow to the top of the knotted section and clamp it down so it has a nice good hold. Now I'm gonna take a few of those single picks and just place those around where it looks like they need to be. A little bit of hot glue to stick it down. And what's great about this particular, I guess, piece of decor here is that it can be changed out. Since we didn't glue anything but a couple of little pieces down, maybe that one or two pieces of cotton stems, you can use this for something else. Put a different arrangement in it. So these all these little picks here are on pieces of wire, so you can cut them off, and some of them are just held on there by the uh, tape, like a floral tape. You can just pull them straight out, and then you can use them in other sections. So don't be afraid to kind of manipulate the flowers and stuff, and um, yeah, get them where you like them. Get them to where it feels right. And you know, with rustic, I want it to look like it's more natural, a more of a natural look, and I think that rustic and cottage core fit right into that that natural rugged rustic kind of pretty look now I decided that it needed some more greenery in it and some more height so I'm just taking some more of these thrifted pieces that look like pretty much just look like weeds they got some type of a berry in them I'm gonna add those down in there and I gotta tell you guys this reminds me of Louisiana I am in Alabama now so I'm an Alabama girl but most of my life was spent in Louisiana and in Mississippi and we had lots of cotton fields all around and wildflowers and this is just this makes my heart happy just like my magnolia wreath that I did I can look at this and I have so many warm memories and I love it okay so now we're gonna make a hanger and I'm just gonna turn this over and it, nothing's falling out. You can see nothing's falling out. Just be gentle. And I'm going to make a hanger for the back. 
So I'm just using a scrap piece that I got off of some other project that I did. I have a bucket that I keep my little scraps in that are big enough to use for, you know, multi-purpose. So I'm just making the simple loop for the back and just putting some hot glue and a piece of paper over that. You can pull your tags off, you can paint the back if it bothers you. You can use some felt or some paper on the back to cover it all up if you want to do that. I'm going to show this to you on my door, but this is actually going to be in the inside of my house. So no one is going to see the back of this piece. Here it is hanging on the door. So if you wanted to have it outside, this is how it would look. I love how it looks with the natural wood on our cabin house. Very pretty. Is this something that you would try? I know I had comments from my Magnolia and my um, summertime, another summertime video that a lot of people are from the South. So I have a lot of Southern folk in my subscriber family. Is this something that you would try? Project number two is a strainer planter. I got this design from a Louisiana girl. Her name is Julie from Julie's Designs and Signs or Signs and Designs. I'll put her link below because I'm giving her all credit for this idea. I saw it and I thought, oh my gosh, I already have the pieces to do this at my house. So everything you see is thrifted except for the paint, which is the, um, it's an antique wax. Even my DeWalt drill is thrifted y'all seriously i paid five dollars for the dewalt drill yeah and two chargers and it works it's perfect okay so this is so easy don't be intimidated by power tools ladies if you if you've never used a power tool don't be intimidated this is so easy okay so what we're going to do is i'm going to put a little bit of that antique wax in the bowl that I always use for my antiques wax as you can see there and just a little bit of water and I'm gonna make a bit of a wash for this so I'm gonna get it it's gonna be kind of runny and messy I'm gonna use this chip book brush and tap a little bit off so I don't go completely nuts with it and then it's just gonna run everywhere you see it on the table there we don't care I don't want it to be completely dark I want this to just look aged and I want it to look you know a little bit darker a little bit of a richer color for my rustic cottagey farmhouse. I don't even know what my style is anymore. All I do know for sure, for certain, is that I love warm, earthy tones and I love a comfortable house. So how's that? Now I'm going to do all three of these the same way. I'm even using my little, do you see that's a chopping mat? that I use to paint on and you can get those at Dollar Tree and they're in a two pack so be sure you go pick one of those up and then they're easy to, to wash off in the sink and uh, glue pretty much peels off of them too. That is so easy and it really doesn't take long when you do it this way for the stain to dry so pretty much we made a, a stain. Alright so this is a strainer of sorts and you see it's kind of bent and not exactly flat on the bottom. If yours is this way, just go ahead and press that down. This is metal and it's kind of easy to maneuver. So just press your bottom a little bit flatter. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, rustic. It's not, we're not trying to achieve perfection here. We just want it to look like it's aged and look like it's been used before. There I go with my whole arm in there again. Okay, in the bottom of this, there are six little marks that do not have holes. This makes it so simple for me to go in and figure out where I'm going to put my legs. So I'm just going to use my paint marker that I got from Dollar Tree, which I love for so many reasons. I'm going to mark these. Take my drill. Now the drill bit is the same size as my screw, and that's important to know because you're going to put a screw through the hole you want it to fit. So just be sure that you know what screws you're using so you can do that. Also drilling down and then using reverse to drill back out of the hole. Okay, these are dry. Now I'm just going to drill into here. Pre-drilling these ho holes will make it easier for the screws to go in. And it, you have to hold this in such an awkward way, or at least I haven't figured out an easier way to do it. So you want to give yourself a break. I'm fairly new 
to power tools uh, as you could probably see here so I'm just looking for the hole and there it is you can see the dark mark where I had it and I'm just starting to screw off just a little bit I'm gonna put that little leg on there and then screw it down see there look at that so you know where I'm going with this okay now I'm tightening them up to make sure that they stay you're also going to want to use something to seal that if you're going to have it you know on an area where it's not under a covered porch and I have a covered porch so I'm not gonna have to worry about it but I still did use a sealer on the legs and around the screw holes and it's a planter Julie you're a genius I know you probably won't see my videos because you have a really big channel but you are so awesome I love this idea and I plan on making more. I see these things at Goodwill all the time. Even the little legs came from Goodwill. These fern picks, they came from Goodwill. These things look so real. So what do you think about these projects? And please tell me you're gonna try at least one. <laughs> Thanks for Project watching. number one, I'm going to need a basket. It is one of two that I have that I thrifted. And I'm going to use magnolias. They're one of my favorite flowers. And I have two of these trees in my yard. These are some foes that I got from Goodwill. I also have some burlap strips, two different thicknesses, and two different colors. One's a little more sheer than the other. And then I just have some tool that is white. I'm gonna be using some floral wire you could also use uh, the little pipe cleaners or Chanel stands if you would like. But first, I'm going to get the dust off of these flowers. Just using a little paintbrush to do that. I'm going to fix the florals on their picks and stems. Just kind of twisting those leaves around a bit. And I'm going to start laying them out how I would like for them to show up. This is a good arrangement to do if you have a glass door that you want to put it on because you can see the other side is going to just be the basket and you won't have a mess back there like you do with some wreaths and floral arrangements that you might want to put up. I'm just going to add these picks where I feel like they look right. I move my things around quite a bit and remember if you have florals that are fake or silk you can always bend the wires to have them in the direction that you would like for them to face i'm going to use some of this floral wire to make little picks and ties i'm just going to fold it over like a hairpin push it through the that open mesh in the back and then twist it and it'll hold it in place i'm going to do the same thing with the greenery you can stack them together and wrap them around and this is what it's going to look like. You can always go back in with some hot glue and a little spare greenery and put that around wherever you would like if you see spots that need a little more filling. But I think this looks pretty good. Everything seems to be happy where it's at. I'm just going to pull a few things out. And now we're going to work on our bow. I am going to use 16 inches of this open mesh And then the one that's a little bit more closely woven, I'm going to do the same thing here. Cut that off. And then I'm just going to cut about the same amount of the tool. That's hard to see against this background. Now this bow is going to be super easy. Protect your fingers. I didn't do that here, but I was very careful how I was holding it. You're going to fold those over on themselves right there on the edges and press it down. Put it aside so it can cool and we're going to do the same thing with this one. We're going to wrap that one over a little bit more so it makes the loop a little smaller. So see there you have a little extra in the back. It's a little shorter on the second layer and then I'm just folding this last one up. No rhyme or reason to that. Now I'm going to press this bow, pinch it, and then press it together in the middle. I'm going to take some jute cord, and I'm just going to tie that in a couple of knots to hold that bow together. 
you can use a twist tie for this if you want or you can use zip ties floral wire whatever you have I'm trying to go through some of the supplies that I have now and jute is what I happen to have a little extra of so these are just pretty much scraps that I have left and I'm going to trim these down to make the tails I'm using 12 inches of each of these I'm going to cut those after I stack them right down the middle and then I'm going to trim off the stitched area because I want to have a rough edge on this I'm just going to trim it off and I'm going to set it aside because it will be used in another project same thing on this one And then you can just start pulling the loose threads off to give it a little frayed edge on both sides. Now going to the darker ribbon, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut it and then just start pulling some of the edges loose from that. And see they come off very easily. Now I'm going to stack them with the darker color in the back and a lighter color on top just like I did with the bow. You can go trim up anything that's sticking out or that doesn't look right. And I'm going to put these together. So there's a little bit of glue here, a little bit of glue there, and we have the tails for the bow. Pretty simple. Now I'm going to put some glue on the top of that and place the bow that we've already made right in the center. Fluff the bow just a little bit, get an idea of what it's going to look like when we're getting ready to use it, and give that glue some time to dry. And this is what our bow is going to look like. So we have to have a way to attach it, and I'm going to do the same thing with the wire that I did before. I'm just going to make a loop like a hairpin, stick it through there, and then I'm going to put it right above where I already have a hanger. Once it's secured, I'm going to use a couple of dots of glue to give my ribbon tails a little bit of movement. Just going to put a dot of glue there because I'll be repurposing this um, form at another time. Just a couple of little dots of glue to hold it in place, and then you can also do the same thing on the other side and put it in your floral section if you'd like. Now I'm going to just make the extra little tail part with the tool, tuck it underneath, and then there you go. So this is project one, and this is a wreath for my door. This is my front door, and it is all glass. And here's my beautiful magnolia arrangement. Project number two. I'm going to be using some of these decorative balls. These are um, different types of almost, I want to say wooden and also vine. I'm going to use a five inch wreath and one of the bigger um, orbs here. It has wire on the inside, like a wire frame or a metal frame. I'm going to do what we what's going to be my bottom right now is what I'm attaching to it this is like my base and I'm going to attach this in four sections and leave a little bit of my pipe cleaners there leave a little bit of length like an inch probably on each section and I'm just going to go into quarters and do one on each quarter all you have to do is kind of bend a little loop to make it thread through easier then I'm going to do the same thing right in the center of of that section right on the bottom. Next I'm going to use some jute cord. I've got about 16 inches but you can vary the lengths and you're going to tie off each of these orbs. Do a couple of knots so that it is nice and secure and be sure that you tie it on a piece that is actually attached and not loose because sometimes they will be loose. Now I flip this over and on the center top what's going to be our top I have just fed a little bit of that jute through there 
and I'm going to do a little knot so that I have a hanger right there on the top. So there you go. This is going to hang. Now we're going to flip it back over to the bottom. I'm going to undo the twist tie just a tad and start adding the ropes with the smaller orbs on it. I'm going to twist that in and then I'm going to trim off the little extra because I don't need the extra anymore. Do the same thing with each of the other sections. You want to vary your length, but since we're not cutting it or tying it down, twisting it up in this will allow you to, to look at it and make adjustments. Make it higher, make it lower, however you want to do these, because you do want these to be hanging at different levels. And this way you can pull that jute back and forth through the loops that you have in that chenille stem. So next I'm going to start pulling off some greenery that I have. Just pulling off all these little segments. These are all thrifted. Every bit of this is thrifted, except for the jute. And I'm just going to start adding these in where that big orb meets the little wreath that's underneath it. So there's a little, little space there, and I'm going to put these pieces. I don't know what kind of greenery this is, but I like it. It's very airy. And I'm just going to do that all the way around. Then I'm going to add some to the top of each one of the smaller orbs. I'm going to add two, one on either side of each of the smaller orbs. It's very easy to do. A little hot glue will hold it in there. You can use a different type of adhesive if you were going to have this outside in a windy place. Um, you know, however you want to do it. Then I'm going to take little strips of jute and I'm going to tie bows in the top over the knot on each one of these. That's going to give it a little added security because it is right underneath the knot. Sorry, I'm out of the out of your sight right there for a moment. And then I'm going to take three strips of 10 inches and I'm going to tie a couple of little stacked bows in the center. And I just want to remind you rules you can find it in the first card of this video and in the description box but I also want to let you know that it is a hop so that means you have to watch each of all the eight videos and in the description boxes of each video there's going to be a link that will send you to the next video you need to leave a comment on each one that you watch each of the eight and this is going to give you a chance to win $80 here you follow all of those rules and good luck now, after the bows are tied, I'm just going to go up and add four or five pieces of that same greenery to the top. Here it is completed. A little piece of porch decor. I think it's gorgeous. What do you think? Now here's the last little project, and this is a little bonus project really, very simple. I'm just using some cans in two different sizes that some greens and some black eyed peas came in because I live in the south. I'm just going to use some extra scraps and bits that I had left. I pulled off the edges to make them rough. I'm going to hot glue them down the seam there. I'm going to use the other one to do the other can. I'm just going to trim it down. Take the edges off, fray it out a bit, and add it to the larger can. These cans could be used for artificial um, candles. It could be like the flameless candles, or you could use greenery. You could put flowers in them. You could put shells in them, whatever you want to do. You can make this your own. It's what my channel is all about. Just glue that down. And remember those scraps trim that I had? Well, there we go. I'm going to use one here. I'm going to take some of that greenery. It's a little bit different. The color is a little bit different on these. This might actually be eucalyptus. Just going to adjust it a bit. 
Then I'm going to tie it off. There you go. That one's done. Now I have this from a project that I did earlier. It's a little bit thicker, a little bit longer, but it is burlap. I'm going to take a little finger full of that same greenery, put it down, tie it nicely, and I'm going to trim that off. So we don't need anything to help catch the wind and take it off the porch. And this is what they're going to look like. Nice. If you want to add greenery like I did, this is what you do. I'm keeping it simple with some neutral colors here. But you can do whatever you would like for yours. I'm not even using any foam. I'm just using what I have, making this super simple for this last project cutting these in different lengths, not even cutting the flowers, I'm just folding them over and poking them down in there, adding some more, added some more pieces. Um, thanks for watching y'all. Bye. Got two projects for you today and we are going to be using this book. Project number one, I am just flipping through here to find the image that will match what I want and I'm really looking for something that's more of a neutral color for this particular project. This book is full of all kinds of things and I feel like I should give you the disclaimer that this was at the Goodwill bins and it would be going into the trash next so I did give it a little more life. I'm going to use my rotary cutter and some glue and I have a metal a measuring stick there a ruler and I'm going to start by taking off the edges of these frames this is just showing you this is a project that I used before during spring and Easter but it was actually a Valentine's piece before you can easily take those off and I'm just going to remove the staples And then you can just sand down over those holes to make them a little more flat. Clean that up if you want to. Careful with those rulers because they are metal and they have little sharp edges. And I have cut my little fingers before with those. I love my foam sanding blocks from Dollar Tree. They work great. You can also get these from Amazon. I think the value is a little bit better if you use a lot of them to get them from Amazon. Okay, so this is another image that I've chosen. It's very pretty. It is some type of a vegetable. Everything in here is vegetable. So this decor is gonna be primarily something that maybe you would use in the kitchen or the dining area, but you could certainly use it anywhere you want in your house. So I'm just showing you two ways that you can remove your pages from the book. And there we have it, our two neutral green pieces. So rather than cutting these out, I wanted to give it a kind of a more, I guess, edgy look. So I'm just holding down with one hand and pulling with the other hand to just kind of tear the edges of the paper. I think this is going to give it a better look to fit into my home decor. You can certainly cut this out. You could do the fussy cut if you wanted to. But I want this to look a little bit like a botanical print, so I want to have the white background on there. These will be placed down on the back of this board. You don't want to peel off too much at one time because you can't put it back, but you could certainly do a little bit at a time to get it as thin as you would like it. So using my purple glue stick that you've seen me use lots of times, I'm going to just cover over this and then place it down. I'm not measuring anything because that doesn't matter to me on this project. Just pressing the bubbles away and out. And actually this paper and with this glue stick, I don't have, I didn't have any bubbling on this project. So I was glad, glad about that. It laid down nice and smoothly. So pretty close for eyeballing it, don't you think? All right.
smoothing it all out. Careful not to pull your edges away, so it's usually best to go from the inside out so you don't peel it back up. And then I'm going to take my glue gun and just add this back down. This is not a precision tip sure bonder. It's just a mini sure bonder, and I absolutely love it. But I have a variety of glue guns that I use. I can switch it up and share with my kids. I'm going to use these clamps from Dollar Tree. Just to hold that frame in place because they have a tendency to kind of pop up or arc up a little bit. And I want it to stay nice and flat. So I'm just securing it with that until the glue dries. Now I'm going to use this piece of wire jute that I used before and I'm just going to use it again. I'm going to put down my glue there and place it right back down on the back and clamp it into place. Try not to glue down your clamps when you do this. You don't want to use too much glue, but I think the ends or the tips are probably silicone. It may just peel right up, but I don't want to take any chances. I love these clamps and I don't want to mess them up. We tend have a tendency to hang on to the tools that are proven to work for us, and so that's what I try to do. Okay, so now to keep my edges from coming up, I'm just putting down here and there a couple of little areas. Now this is vanishing glue stick, so it's actually going to turn clear, and you won't even know it's there. Project number two. I'm taking some thrifted pieces. This is a candlestick that was covered in candle wax that I went ahead and cleaned up. And these are some little frames that apparently were on clearance at Michael's and they were donated. So I'm just taking my little, I think this is a Cricut tool that of course I got from Goodwill. And I'm gonna just scratch all of that off. You use whatever technique works for you to get that off. There's lots of ways to remove stickers. After I get that off, I'm just gonna use my sander and just sand it down a little bit. Now I'm taking my furniture marker, I believe that's oak, and I am just going to start coloring over this. I'm going with the grain from side to side to color my frame. You could do this certainly with antiquing wax or anything that you have, but I've enjoyed these markers and I like to color, you know, throw back to when I was a kid. I enjoy coloring, and so I really I wasn't bothered by the amount of time it took to do this. This was fun for me to watch the color, laying that color down. Plus it gives it some striation and variation in the color and um, you know, sort of areas that would naturally be textured in wood. So I like the way that this looks. You can leave it just like this if you would like. It's, ve it's very pretty this way, but I decided that I'm going to do something a little different. So here's the candlestick and I'm going to go over it also with that same color. Was it necessary? Mm, maybe not. But it felt like the thing to do at the moment. And I wanted the color underneath, once I get this all distressed, to be the same, to make it look like it was one piece. So I feel like Having it the same color on the top and on the bottom piece will do that, will give us that effect. This is the same marker. I have used this several times and look at the flow of paint coming out of it or stain or whatever it is that's in there. It still has extremely good flow. It has, the tip is still perfect. There's no sort of how they get kind of ragged looking and puffy and kind of gross. You know how markers do when you overuse them. These markers have not done that. So I highly, highly recommend these furniture markers. And they come in two different packs that I have found. And um, each pack has three different colors. Love these. Again, could have stained it, but I wanted to do it this way and I enjoyed it. Plus it's a good test for this furniture pen. Okay. So the whole thing is done and you have to wait until it's dried, of course. Then I'm going to do what Teresa, and I'll put her link below, 
She does a lot of shabby chic and she does distressing on her projects. She uses candle wax. So I decided to use a little piece of the candle wax that actually came out of the top of this candlestick to rub across the areas of my candle, my candlestick rather, and the top frame to see if it would work for me. And if it'll work over this, you know, these surfaces. So that's what you see me doing here. I'm just rubbing it all over especially on the high points, and then I'm gonna chalk paint it. So this is the Linen White Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint that you have seen me use about a thousand times. I don't know if this type of distressing would work with other paints or if it's just chalk paint, I'm not sure. So I'm just taking my little chippy brush here and going all around this candlestick with this white paint. Doesn't have to be perfect. The idea is for it to be rather farmhouse and rustic looking, so I'm, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm going to set it aside to dry, and then I'm going to do the same thing here with my frame. I'm just going to lay that paint on all over. Be sure you get the edges of your frame as well, the edges and the sides when you color it and then when you put your paint on, and that inside little edge. I'm going to get that too. So you see I'm not being super neat with this and you can almost see where it's pulling away the wax is kind of resisting it already and I didn't use very heavy wax. So now I'm trying to decide which picture I want to use for this one. And it fits perfectly so we're going to use this one and I'm going to cut it out with my little rotary blade and get your fingers out of the way certainly when you do this and you want, might want to use a slightly light hand on this if you don't want to remove several pages at one time okay so for this one i am going to cut it out i'm going to save my page number and the label for this i'm going to set it aside because i'll be putting it back with the illustration and this is going to be the backing, so I'm going to lay this down with a little more of that purple school glue. See, this makes it really easy when you're doing a project. You can see exactly where your glue is, and then it disappears when it's dry. So, you know, you won't have to worry about any spots that you might have missed. Again, I'm pressing out from the inside out and holding on to it so it doesn't slide off my paper. I've never had that happen by the way, but you know, just to be on the safe side. I'm just trimming up a little bit because I want this to look nice on the back. I'm going to cut out my page number. Okay, and apparently I'm skipping over, and now we're back onto the candlestick. I am using this same little tool. I believe this goes with a Cricut or some type of a... Um, I don't know, some type of an item. I think this came with a kit, maybe. It doesn't have Cricut label on it, and I'm not sure. It could be one of those little things that you use to lay down wallpaper. But I didn't have a credit card down here, and I think that's what Teresa does for hers, is uses like a credit card. So I thought, well, this would be good. This would make a good um, substitution for that. So I did that, and then now I'm taking this little tool, and I'm just scratching on it, putting some scratches here and there. And I love this. I will definitely be using this technique again. This was really, this was fun for me. For as much as I like things looking very neat and nice and well put together, I loved tearing this thing back down. Giving it some age, making it look a little rustic. What do you think about that? And you can do this too. You can do this at home. This is, I love the, the effect of this. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one, use the little uh, scraper and then use some sandpaper to go over it. I want my edges to be the brown color, so that's what I did there on the, on the very edges of it. And that's how I wanted it. Okay, again, here we go back over here to cutting it out. I'm going to put the label back on here and I'm going to put the page number back on here. So don't be alarmed, there's going to be some missing footage in a moment. But it's real simple for me to catch you up. 
Okay, I just decided where I wanted to put my sunburst squash label. And there we go. I think this will be nice for fall also since it's got those sort of yellowy colors, golden colors. And then there's my page number. So here we go. There are my distressed pieces. And then I'm going to take my frame. I'm going to stuff the a little bit of styrofoam in there. I'm going to coat it down with glue and then press that down in there just like that. It'll be held in place with some clamps until it is dry. You can see that I'm just making a little room there so it will sit down in there. Just pulling up that glue because I really want this thing to stay in place. And by the way, it is still standing and I did this project about a month ago. So my Dollar Tree clamp fits nicely. And then I've just taken that, hot glued the backing into the frame backwards. And this is what it looks like at that point. Just use a little pick that is stuck down there to help hold it up. You can see the little wood pick and I used one in the front too that's actually sunken down in there a little bit just to give a little extra support but you can see that it is almost looks like one piece if I was to paint that little spot flush then it would look completely like one piece that was made together I think so here is a view of the front give me a thumbs up if you like this project if you like these projects, which one do you like the best? The first one or the second one? The first one was definitely more of a beginner type project. This one took a little more effort. Will you be trying this with something else? You could use fruit, you could use any type of images you want. You can use calendar pictures, um, coloring book pages if you like that, anything you like. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you again real soon. Bye.